I have a little machine shop high torque mini mill and I'm going to be doing a three-part video series on how to install a DRO, a digital readout. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Fuzz Overlord who produced a YouTube video showing a completed uh, high torque mini mill with the DRO installed. I'm going, I took his video and uh, reverse engineered it and did with a little bit of head scratching. I came up uh, with um, a little bit more in-depth procedure on how to actually install the DRO. Uh, we're going to do three parts. We're going to do the X, the Y, and the Z axis as separate videos. Uh, we're going to start out with the Y axis as it's the most difficult and most labor intensive to uh, install the, the scales to that axis. So we'll start out here first. Um, if you look really closely uh, at the mill, you notice uh, I have cap head screws bolting the, the mill to the table. When I originally installed the mini mill and mounted it to the table, I used the bolts and the nuts that the mill was uh, bolted to the pallet that when I received it from Little Machine Shop. Uh, because of the, because of the, uh, height requirement here I had to cut those down to cap heads because uh, there isn't much room to work with here so the first thing you'll notice is that you do need to mount your high-tech mini mill to your workbench with cap head screws okay the next thing we have to consider is if you look very closely at the base of your table uh, this machined portion here uh, is tapered and also if you notice there's a slot cut to match the the upper portion of the table here so we're going to have to do some some things to to make sure that this scale is parallel to the the y-axis and how I did this was I took a sheet or I took a uh, aluminum bar a half inch thick 13.75 uh, inches long and I milled it down flat and I put some uh, set screws, machined some set screws, two at each end. And then I uh, milled or drilled some holes for mounting screws into the cast iron of the table base. Okay, and then to that aluminum bar, we can mount our scale here. So the set screws, of course, are to allow us to adjust uh, the scale to be perpendicular uh, to the axis because when you slide the uh, axis along or the y-axis table along the axis of the scale it has to be perpendicular and it has to be really level uh, the, the sensor down here at the bottom is mounted to a glass scale inside this uh, housing here so you you can't have a lot of movement on that and there's only a small amount of play so once I had the bar, or I milled the bar, installed the drill holes and the set screws, I mounted up the bar, and then I used a level to uh, make sure that the bar was perpendicular to the uh, table. And I can come in and make measurements at each end. And then uh, once that was par uh, parallel to the table, then I mounted uh, the scale to the rectangular bar. Okay. Uh, what I did at this point was take a dial indicator and run it along the edge of the scale to make sure that uh, along the entire axis of the Y we, uh, we, we were within one thousandths of an inch. So again there wouldn't be any binding of the sensor. What I did then was I, I needed to make a bracket to mount to the actual uh, the actual Y axis slide and I decided to make a sheet metal bracket uh, and then mount that to the actual sensor bracket and how I did this was I took a, uh, a light card stock and cut out a template and then um, transferred that to some 22 gauge sheet metal and then using um, my vise a hammer and a brass uh, a brass punch I was able to bend the actual angles um, and then mount this this bracket to the actual table and to the sensors one thing we have to be very careful of is the um, x-axis Gibbs 
run along, or actually, I'm sorry, the y-axis gives run along here. So when you drill your mounting holes into the actual table, you have to make sure you don't drill too deep so that you'll hit the gibbs. So what I did was uh, um, I actually used, to get the proper height, I used two pennies on each side to lay this out to get the this tab up high enough so I could clear the gibbs. And I drilled 3 8 inch holes. Uh, I'm using uh, M6 by 1 cap head screws here, drilled 3 8 inch holes and then tapped them appropriately. Um, the actual holes in the bottom of the sensor are M5, so I mounted those and they, the bolts came with the installation kit that I received. So then I laid that out, drilled the holes, tapped them, mounted, mounted the cap head screws and I, again, because I didn't drill too deep, I didn't hit any of the gibbs there. Uh, I drilled I drilled the holes slightly oversized so I can uh, have a, a minor amount of adjustment so we wouldn't be binding uh, the sensor. And of course then I do a complete uh, run of the axis to make sure that nothing is binding and that the sensor is reading on the display uh, without any intermittent uh, changing in the, the actual uh, reading. So you want to make sure that that sensor is free to move along the entire axes.